we have a service call on a walk-in cooler that's uh, at 55 degrees. Evaporator fan motors are running and at this time I don't see any ice. These are our walk-in condensers. We've got a freezer and a cooler. I'm assuming that one's the freezer because that's the one that's running, but we'll have to jump in here and figure it out. Little tour real quick. Everything looks good. All right, so get the electrical opened up. The first thing we're gonna do is check three-phase power coming in. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. 208, 208, 208. Our contactor's not pulled in, but we know we have three-phase power coming in. The next thing I'm gonna do is jump over here to the time clock and check one to neutral, 208. We're gonna check, I should say one to N. We're gonna check three to N to make sure, okay. And then we're gonna check four to N. Three to end is our defrost circuit. So four to end, that's our refrigeration circuit. So we're in refrigeration mode right now. Okay. Um, we're gonna go ahead and check our low pressure control. See if we've got an open circuit. And we do. So our low pressure control is open right now. So we are gonna have to get some service gauges on this and see why we have an open low pressure control. So that's interesting. We have equalized pressures in the system. There's plenty of pressure on the low side. The pressure control is open. I'll have to dig into this a little bit more. There's something interesting going on here. So temporarily, I jumped out the low pressure switch. And uh, watching the box run right now. It's under a heavy, heavy load, so we're gonna let it run for a little bit. We're obviously gonna need to change out that low pressure switch. It's kind of strange though. Okay, so my pressure control is right there. That's the capillary, and there's no way to shut off the pressure. So what I did was I clipped the tube Minus this is, or mind you, this is the low pressure control and I pinched it shut because it's just a minor amount. So now we're going to pump the system down. So I've gone to the receiver valve and I've uh, front seated it, okay? And um, I've got the new pressure control set in there and wired in, but it's obviously not connected yet because I've got to get the connection on the other port that I've got pinched off. So what we're going to do We've got power turned back on. We're going to go ahead and jump out this pressure control by using the little spot right here. And now it's running and we're going to pump the system down to about 15, 10 PSI, 10 to 15 PSI. And then I'll just change that pressure control while there's, you know, 10 PSI of pressure. It'll be no big deal. So we're just letting it pump down right now. We're at 14, 12, 10. Eh chill right there and mind you it's probably gonna rise a little bit so the whole point is is we want pressure coming out the whole time I'm changing it that way we don't ever run the system out of gas so now I'm just gonna get in there with a couple wrenches and twist that thing off okay so I've got it replaced now what I did was I just uh, made that finger tight then loosened it and put my finger on it put some nylog on the threads Use the nylog glue, it's good stuff. Put some nylog on the threads and also oiled the back side of the flare with nylog too. And then um, just, you know, tightened everything up. I uh, was able to do it without losing the pressure in the system. I mean, it, you know, pissed out for a second, but that was it. So, that's the easy change out. And then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, open up the receiver and let the gas flow back through. Now we're able to do this without changing the dryer or having to pull a vacuum because the system was never completely out of pressure. Another tip is on these receivers or any of these service valves that have packings. So this one has a packing nut. It's got two flat sides to put my wrench on it. You always want to loosen and tighten those as you're doing the valve. So you notice something. This one's actually going to start leaking when I loosen it. Okay, you're going to make this valve last longer if you loosen the packing before you open or close the valve. Okay, so now 
Don't know if you guys hear that, but it's kind of pissing gas out a little bit. That's how it's going to be. Okay, so now we're going to open up the system. Mind you, we're still on a positive pressure, about 15 PSI. So now we're going to open up the system. So it's open now and it's running. So we're gonna test the pressure control settings now. You can never trust the numbers on these controls. You always need to manually set them. Meaning you need to see where it cuts in and cuts out at because those numbers can be skewed a little bit. So we're gonna pump it down one more time. And we're gonna check to see what the pressure control turns off at and then what it turns on at to verify that we have it set where we want it. Okay, so we're just gonna watch it pump down and then I'm going to crack the valve and watch it uh, turn back on just to make sure we're good. So we're getting ready to shut off right now. It should be around 5 or 6. Okay, so it looks like it's cutting out at 15. Uh, 25. Oh, no, that's about right. Yeah, so it's 25 minus. Yeah, so we'll see. Okay, so now we're going to Bring it back on and see, just, just crack it just a little bit and see where it turns back on at. Okay, my differential isn't enough there. I need more of a differential. We're gonna adjust the pressure control accordingly and then repeat to make sure I have it set where I want it. On this system, I want it to cut out at about five and then cut in at 25, 30-ish, somewhere in there. It's just a regular pump down. Okay, we're gonna test it again. See where it cuts out at and where it cuts in at. Should just cut out any time now. Cutting out about two psi. That's okay. A little low, but I'm gonna just barely crack it and see where it turns on at. Yeah, thirty-ish. Okay, so that's close enough. But like I said, you can never really trust those because according to this. It cuts in at 30 and cuts out at 5. So, and it's actually cutting out at what, 2 and in at like 25-ish or 30-ish or something. So, you just got to always double check your settings. This one was a service call on a walk-in cooler. The unit had a bad low pressure control. It wasn't a really difficult call, okay? It was a little strange though that the pressure control failed in the way that it did. Basically, the pressure control thought the system was completely out of gas when it wasn't. Okay, so to verify my diagnosis, I went ahead and jumped out the low pressure control and then verified that everything else in the system was working properly and it was. So the system itself was really high in temperature, so I left the pressure control jumped out while I went and picked up the parts. It took me about an hour or so to go get the pressure control, so that was good because I was able to see the box come down in temperature by the time I had gotten back, okay? Another thing was is I used a shortcut. And sometimes we tend to take shortcuts and to try to make our job faster and quicker. I'm okay with shortcuts as long as they work. Okay, when they don't work, that's when they start to become problematic. So you always have to be prepared and know what could go wrong so that way you're ready for it. Okay, so I was able to pump this system down at the liquid line receiver to about 6 PSI. So basically I still had 6 PSI of positive pressure in the low side. And I was able to change that pressure control. It was just a quarter inch flare fitting. I was able to twist that off and get the new one on before the system ran out of gas. Okay. By doing that, I saved myself from having to change the liquid line filter dryer and from having to pull a, uh, a vacuum on the system. Okay. Now, again, I had everything ready with me. I had already installed the low pressure control, the new one, and it was just basically ready to be connected. I had my wrenches that I needed. I had my nylog that I needed. I had everything there just in case I ran into a problem. That's a very important thing to understand, okay? 
There's times that you can do this. There's times that you can't. Okay, so you always have to be ready. Okay, don't don't just assume it's going to be quick and easy because when you assume, that's when it bites you in the butt. So, change the low pressure control. The system was working great. Everything else was cool. It had a clear sight glass. The refrigerant pressures were where they needed to be. The temperature controller was cycling where it was supposed to be. Everything else was great. Okay, so that's it. I want to say thank you very much, like I have in the last videos. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Um, I do enjoy the feedback. I've been getting lots of emails from you guys. Keep them coming. Okay, lots of questions. If I haven't gotten back to you yet, I will. Okay, uh, it's just taking some time to get through. There's a bunch of emails, but I'm getting through them, and I think I've answered the majority of them. Your guys' uh, comments on the Facebook page, that's great. Comments on the Instagram photos, that's great. Uh, the emails that you've sent me, that's awesome. Okay, uh, please continue to give me feedback. Let me know what you guys think. Other than that, we'll see you guys on the next one.